Alright guys, in this video we're going to be introducing and discussing the topic of long division. Now, let's recall what division is in terms of its purpose. We're trying to figure out how many times a number goes into another number without going over. Now, before we jump into any practice problems, let's recall two very important pieces of information from division that helps us keep um, everything organized. So, let's say I have 45 divided by 9 here. Recall that the number that's being divided, in this case 45, is known as your dividend. The number being divided is known as your dividend. The number that your dividend is divided by is known as your divisor. So again, the number being divided is the dividend, the number it's divided by is your divisor. Keeping that in mind, let's look at our first practice problem. So for my first practice problem, I have 675 divided by 5. Now again, just to recap, 675 is our dividend, it's the number being divided, and 5, the number that 675 is divided by, is our divisor. With this setup here, one of the analogies they use very commonly is if you imagine 675 is in the house, um, and it's the number being divided, 5 is trying to go into the house, it's at the front door, so it's trying to go into 675. That's one way to kind of remember it. So 675 is in the house being divided. 5 is trying to go into the house. So what we're trying to do here is trying to see how many times 5 can go into 675 without going over. Instead of trying to just tackle the whole number, let's break it apart. All right, so instead of trying to figure out how many times 5 goes into 675, let's take it step by step and start by saying, well, how many times does 5 go into 6? If you're ever unsure how many times a number goes into another number, go ahead and on the side, just write your times tables of your divisor. So for our divisor being 5, 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 2 is 10. Now I can stop right here for right now because... I'm trying to figure out how many times 5 goes into 6 without going over. 5 can't go into 6 two times because 10 is greater than 6, and that's going over. But 5 can go into 6 one time, because 5 times 1 is 5. Now I'm going to go ahead and subtract these two. I'm going to get 6 minus 5 is 1. I'm going to bring down the next number. So now we're going to try to figure out how many times 5 goes into 17. If we continue on with our multiplication tables, we see 3 times 5 is 15, 4 times 5 is 20, and again, I can stop right here because 20 is greater than 17, which means that 5 can't go into 17 four times without going over, but it can go in three times because 5 times 3 is 15, okay? So 5 times 3 is 15. And we'll subtract these two again, so 17 minus 15 is 2, and then bring down the 5. And then we're trying to figure out how many times 5 goes into 25. Well, if we go ahead and continue our times tables of 5, we see that the next number, 5 times 5, is indeed 25. So 5 times 5 is 25, and remember, it's it goes in evenly. It's, it doesn't go over, it goes in perfectly evenly. So 5 times 5 is 25. That's not going over 25, it's directly equal to 25. But now what we see here is that we get what's called a remainder of 0. And that's very good, because that means that 135 times 5 is 675. Which means that 5 goes into 675 evenly. Now one way to check our answer is if we take the quotient, which is the number that we end up with, and we multiply it by our original divisor, we should get 675. Okay, So 5 times 5 is 25, carry the 2, 3 times 5 is 15, plus the 2 that we carried is 17, carry the 1, 
1 times 5 is 5, plus the 1 carried is indeed 675. So it does match. Okay, again, so this tells us that 675, when divided by 5, is 135. Okay, let's do another one. So for my next example, I have 7,773 divided by 3. Now again, just to recap, 7,773 is our dividend. It's inside the house. And 3 is the divisor number that 7,773 is divided by is trying to get into the house or into 7,773. So again, let's break this up part and take it step by step by first trying to figure out how many times 3 goes into 7. So go ahead and write your 3 times tables. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. I can go ahead and stop right there because 9 is greater than 7. So 3 can't go into 7 3 times because it's too much. But 3 can go into 7 twice because 3 times 2 is 6. Again, I'll subtract the 2. 7, times, 7 minus 6 is 1. Bring down the 7. We'll see how many times 3 goes into 17. So 4 times 3 is 12. Continuing our table, 5 times 3 is 15. 3 times 6 is 18. Now again, I can stop here because 18 is greater than 17. And it, that means that 3 can't go into 17 6 times or that's going over. But 3 can go into 17 5 times because 3 times 5 is 15 and that's not going over 17. So 3 times 5 is 15. Subtract the 2. Um, 17 minus 15 is 2. Bring down the 7. 3 goes into 27. If we continue on with our multiplication table, 3 times 7 is 21. Times 8 is 24. 3 times 9 is 27. So 3 goes into 27 9 times evenly. So 3 times 9 is 27. Bring down 3. Okay, now we just have to figure out how many times 3 goes into 3. And from our table, we see that it goes in once. Okay, 3 times 1 is 3. And again, we get a remainder of 0, which tells us that 3 goes into 7,773 evenly and 2,591 times. Now again, we can check our answer if we take uh, the number we came up with, which is known as the quotient, and multiply it by the original divisor. So 2,591 times 3 should give us 7,773, so let's find out. 1 times 3 is 3, 9 times 3 is 27, carry the 2, 3 times 5 is 15, plus the 2 we carried is 17, carry the 1, 1 times 3, or 2 times 3 is 6, plus the 1 we carried is indeed 7, 7,773. Okay, let's do one more. So for my last one, I have 3,122 divided by 4. Now, on Unlike the other ones, the first thing you probably notice in this one is, well, 4 is greater than 3, so it can't go in. And you're absolutely right, it can't. So the only thing that we can really say about 4 going into 3 is it can go in 0 times, because it can't go in at all. So 4 goes into 3 0 times, so we'll do 4 times 0 is 0. And what the zero does is it's really a placeholder. Because what we're saying is that four can't go into three 
any terms without going over. So what we'll say is 3 minus 0 is 3. Now what we can do is bring down this 1, and now we can figure out how many times 4 goes into 31 without going over. So go ahead and make your table. So 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 6 is 24. 4 times 7 is 28. 4 times 8 is 32. And I can stop right there. Because 32 is greater than 31, which again tells us that 4 can't go into 31 8 times because that's going over. But it can go in 7 times because 4 times 7 is 28 and 28 is less than 31. So 4, 31 minus 28 is 3. Bring down the 2. So 4 goes into 32, well, we just, from our uh, multiplication tables, we'll see that 4 times 8 is 32, and it goes in evenly, so 4 times 8 is 32. Go ahead and subtract, bring down 2, and then bring down this 2 as well. Now we're running into the same problem that we ran into in the very beginning. 4 can't go into 2 because 4 times 1 is 4, which is greater than 2. So again, we have to say that it can't go in. But when we do this, we're going to see 4 times uh, 0 is 0, 2 minus 0 is 2. Well, now we have a remainder, and we still are trying to figure out how many times 4 goes into 3,122. Here's what we do next. We're going to insert a decimal here into both the quotient that we have so far and the original dividend. What this allows us to do is it allows us to add a zero to the original number, the uh, original dividend. Now keep in mind, I haven't changed the number here. 3,122 is the same as 3,122.0, but it allows me to bring down another zero. So instead of trying to figure out how many times 4 goes into 2, now I'm trying to figure out how many times 4 goes into 20. And so if we look at our table here, 4 goes into 20 five times. Now what this is going to tell us is that 4 can go into 3,122, and it can go in evenly. It's just that the quotient that we come up with is not a whole number, and that's perfectly okay. It just tells us again that it's not a whole number, but it still can go in evenly. So again, if I do what I did um, the other times, so if I take our quotient, or the number we come up with, 780.5 times 4, We'll do the multiplication, Seven, 5 times 4 is 20, carry the 2, 0 times 4 is 0, plus the 2, carry, 8 times 4 is 32, carry the 3, 7 times 4 is 28, plus, one, or plus 3 is 31. Now all we have to do is count for the decimal that we added to the original dividend and our quotient. So in order to do that, when we multiply decimals, uh, decimal numbers, we account for how many numbers are to the right of a decimal place. So we account to see how many decimals we have. We only have one, so we only have to account for one decimal. And we count the numbers that are to the right of it. So there's only one number to the right of the decimal place. So we're only going to move from the farthest point to the right, left, that many decimal places, in this case only one place, okay? So again, when multiplying decimals, you account how many decimal places by how many numbers are to the right of the decimal place, alright? So again, this will tell us that 780.5 times 4 is indeed 3,122, and again, that's the same as 3,122.0. Alright, I hope this video really helps you guys out. If you have any questions, never hesitate to contact me. Again, I'd be more than happy to do more practice problems, but um, I hope this helps you out, and I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you for watching. Bye.